from those around I hear a cry Oh God, oh God Alhamdulillah Wa salatu salamu alaykumullah Assalamu alaykum wa rahmatullah wa barakatuh My dear Muslims I hope you are all doing great inshaAllah Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala create to you all with the best of health and strong iman. I mean, there is a pretty emotional story that brings tears into people's eyes. And this is a story which also carries a great message. And I would like to share this story with you, inshallah. I hope that we can all benefit from it and take lessons from it, from the message that it has given us. This story has been narrated in the book Aman al Qadim. This story is, is called She is My Sister. Her cheeks were worn and sunk in her skin onto bones. That didn't stop her though. You could never catch her not reciting the Quran. Always vigil in a personal prayer room that dad had set up for her, bowing and prostrating, raising her hands in prayer. That was the way she was from dawn to sunset and back again. Boredom was for others and not for her. As for me, I craved nothing more than fashion magazines and novels. I treated myself all the times to videos and magazines until those trips to the rental place became my trademark. It became my hobby. As they say, when something becomes habit, people tend to distinguish you by it. I was negligent in my responsibilities and laziness characterized my salah. One night I turned the video off after a marathon, three hours of watching a movie. Dadan softly rose in that quiet night. I slipped peacefully into my blanket. Her voice carried from her prayer room. Yes, would you like anything, Nora? I said. With a sharp needle, she popped my crown. Don't sleep before you pray Fajr, she said. Ah, there's still an hour before Fajr. That was only the first Adan. I still got time. I've got so much time to do Fajr Salah. Don't worry. With those loving pinches of hers, she called me closer. She was always like that. Even before the fear sickness shook her spirit and shut her in bed. Hanan, can you come sit beside me? I could never refuse any of her requests. You could touch the purity and sincerity. Yes, Nora. Please sit here. Okay, I'm sitting. What's on your mind? With the sweetest mono voice, she began reciting. Every soul shall taste death, and you will merely be repaid, repaid the earnings on Resurrection Day. She stopped thoughtfully, then she asked, Do you believe in death? Of course I do. Do you believe that you shall be responsible for whatever you do, regardless of how small or how large? I do, but Allah is forgiving and merciful, and I've got a long life waiting for me that I can use to do my salah and ask for forgiveness. Stop it, Hanan! Aren't you afraid of death and its and its abruptness? Look at Hind. She was young, than they knew, but she died in a car accident. So did so and so and so. Death is age blind. And your age could never be a measure of when you shall die. You could die at a young age. You could die tomorrow. You could die next Thursday. You could die today. You could die in the next hour. No one knows the death. 
So don't think that you've got a long life waiting for you. The darkness of the room filled my skin with fear. I'm scared of the dark. Now you made me scared of death. How am I supposed to go to sleep now? Nora, I thought you promised you'd go with us on a holiday during the summer break. Impact. Her voice broke and her heart quivered. I might be going on a long trip this year, Hanan, but somewhere else. Just maybe. All of our lives here, lives in Allah's hand, and we all belong to Him. My eyes wheeled and the tears slipped down both cheeks. I pondered my sister's greasy sickness, how the doctors had informed my father privately there was not much hope that Nora was going to outlive the disease. She wasn't told though. Who hinted to her? Or was it that she could sense the truth? What are you thinking about, Hanan? Her voice was sharp. Do you think I'm just saying this because I am sick? Uh huh. In fact, I may live longer than people who are not sick. And you, Hanan, how long are you going to live? 20 years? Maybe 40? Then what? Through the dark, she reached from my hand and squeezed gently. There's no better, there is no difference between us. We're all going to leave this world to live in paradise or agonize in hell. Listen to the words of Allah. Anyone who is punished, who is pushed away from the fire and sh shown into Jannah will have triumphed. I left my sister's room dazed, her words ring in my ears. May Allah guide you, Hanad. Don't forget your prayer, she said. Eight o'clock in the morning, pounding on the door. I didn't usually wake up at that time. Crying, confusion, oh Allah, what happened? Nora's condition became critical after Fajr. They took her immediately to the hospital. Inna Allahi wa inna ilahi raju'un. There wasn't going to be any holiday this summer. It was written that I would spend the summer at home. After an eternity, it was one o'clock in the afternoon. Mother phoned the hospital. Yes, you can come and see her, said the nurse. Dad's voice was, has changed. Mother could sense something had gone deathly wrong. We left for the hospital immediately. There was the avenue I used to travel and thought was so sure. Why is it so long now? Whereas before it seemed so short. Why is this journey so long? I thought to myself. Where are the crowd and the traffic that would give me a chance to gaze left and right? Everyone, just move out of my way. Mother was shaking her head in her hands crying as she made dua for Noah. We arrived at the hospital's main entrance. One man was moaning. Another was involved in an accident, and the third eye was iced. You couldn't tell if he was alive or dead. We skipped stairs to Noah's floor. She was in intensive care. The nurse approached us. Let me take you to her. As we walked down the aisle, the nurse went on expressing how sweet a girl Nora was. She reassured mother somewhat that Nora's condition had gotten better than where it was when she first arrived in the morning. Sorry, no more than one visit at a time, said the nurse. This was the intensive care unit. Through the small window in the door and past the flurry of white robes, I caught my sister's eyes. Mother was standing beside her. After two minutes, mother came out, unable to control her cry. She was full of tears. 
You may enter and say salam to her on condition you do not speak too long, they told me. Two minutes should be enough. How are you, Nora? You were fine last night, sister. What happened? We held hands. She squeezed harmlessly. Even now, Alhamdulillah, I'm doing fine, she said. Alhamdulillah? But your hands are so cold. I sat on her bedside and rested my fingers on her knee. She jerked it away. Sorry, did I hurt you? No, it's just that I remembered Allah's words. One leg will be wrapped to the other leg in the death shroud. Hanan, pray for me. I may be meeting the first day of the hereafter very soon. It is a long journey and I haven't prepared enough good deeds in my suitcase. I am not ready to meet my creator. A tear escaped my eye and ran down my cheek at her words. I cried and she joined me. The room blurred away and let, left us. Oh, two sisters to cry together. Dad was now becoming more worried about me. I've never cried like that before. I'm not usually an emotional type. I'm usually the strong type. So he was worried that I was crying in such a, such a state. At home and upstairs in my room, I watched the sun pass away with a sorrowful day. Silence mingled in our corridors. A cousin came in my room and another. The visitors were many and all the voices from, the, from downstairs stirred together. Only one thing was clear at that point. Nura had indeed died. I stopped distinguishing who came and who went. I couldn't remember what they said. Oh Allah, where was I? What was I? What was going on? I couldn't even cry anymore. Later, that week, they told me that what had happened. Dad had taken my hands to say goodbye to my sister for the last time. I had kissed Nora's head. I remember only one thing though, seeing her spread on that bed, the bed that was going to, she was going to die on. I remember the verse she recited, one leg will be wrapped to the other leg, the death shroud, and I knew too well the truth of the next verse. The drive on that day will be to your Lord, Allah. I tiptoed into her prayer room that night, staring at the quiet dresses and silent mirrors. I treasured who it was that had shared my mother's stomach with me. Nora was my twin sister. I remembered who I had swapped sorrows with, who had comforted me in rainy days, who I had played games with, who I played skipping with, who I joked with, who I laughed with, who I talked with, I cried with. I remembered who had prayed for my guidance and who had spent so many tears for so many long nights telling me about death and its accountability. May Allah save us all. Tonight is Nora's first night that she shall spend in a tomb, in a grave. Oh Allah, have mercy on her and illuminate her grave. This was her Quran, her prayer mat, and this was the spring rose colored dress that she told me she would hide until she got married. This was the spring colored this was a spring rose colored dress that she told me she would hide until she got married. The dress she wanted to keep just for her husband. I remember my sister and cried all the days that I had lost. All the time that I had with her that I didn't spend properly. I prayed to Allah to have mercy on me. 
accept me and forgive me. I pray to Allah to keep her firm in her grave as she always liked to mention in her supplications, in her duas. At that moment I stopped. I asked myself, what if it is was who had what if it was I who had died? Where would I be moving on to? Fear pressed me and tears began all over again. Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. The first Adan rose softly from the masjid. How beautiful it sounded this time. Not like before, where I used to ignore the Adan. Where I used to say that I've got so much time left. Not be fudged. I used to carry on watching the TV, reading my magazine. But no, rather this time, the first Adan rose softly from the masjid. And how beautiful it sounded this time. I felt calm and relaxed as I repeated I repeated the call to prayer. I wrapped the shawl around my shoulders and stood to pray Fajr. I prayed as if it was my last prayer, a farewell prayer, just like Nora had done yesterday. It had been her last Fajr. Now, and inshallah, for the rest of my life, if I awake in the mornings, I do not count on being alive by the evening. In the evening, I do not count on being alive by the morning. We are all going on Nura's journey. What have we prepared for it? May Allah SWT strengthen our Iman and keep us firm on the straight path to Jannah and make our journey the hereafter easy. I mean, my dear brothers and sisters, stay strong in your deen and iman. And remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the first thing in the morning, during the day, and the last thing in the night. Supplicate to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He is the most merciful. He likes to hear us. He likes to hear us asking for his forgiveness. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala likes to hear us and likes to forgive. He says, ask me for forgiveness and I'll forgive because he is our Rahman and Rahim. He is the most merciful. He likes to forgive. Why is it that every day when we wake up we don't remember Allah SWT? We become too preoccupied with this dunya and forget that we're going to be meeting the Allah SWT soon. Why is it that? Why is it that only when calamity, when something bad happens to us that we remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala but when we are at ease when things are going good for us when we are happy we forget Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala we must remember that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has said remember me in time of ease and I will remember you in the time of hardship remember me in the time of ease and I will remember you in the time of hardship so what is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala telling us that we must remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when it's going easy for us. We should not be hypocritical and be the ones who only turn to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when things are hard for us, when everything is going against us. Yet, when things are going good for us, we forget Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We should not be of those people that only remember Allah in a part-time basis. Rather, we should be full-time basis. We should be the ones that remember Allah all the time. We should remember in our supplication, in our duas, in our prayers, in our salah. We must remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when we're gathering around with other Muslims. How beautiful is it if we remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in a gathering and we know there will be angels they will be coming down and listening. There will be angels roaming around. And they will see that you're mentioning the name of Allah. And they will come and sit down in that gathering. How beautiful is that? And that angel will make dua for you. Will report back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They will say so and so. And so and so. They were in a circle and they remembered you. I heard them. They remembered you Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. How beautiful would it be that we remember Allah SWT? 
tahajjud prayer time. Because Allah SWT says that He descends to the lowest part of heaven in the last two thirds of the night. Last two thirds of the night when it's time for tahajjud. This is when Allah SWT will ask, will ask, who wants my forgiveness? And the angels will say, Oh Allah, so and so is asking for your forgiveness. So Allah SWT will reply, Forgive so and so. The angel will go back and Allah SWT will say, Who's asking to be saved from hellfire? And the angel will say, So and so is supplicating to you, Allah, is praying to you and is begging you to be saved from the hellfire. Allah SWT will say, Make hellfire hellfire forbidden to them. Can you imagine that being saved from hellfire? This is how merciful Allah SWT is. This is not once in a year. We could do tahajjud prayer every night. Every single night we could be praying tahajjud prayer. And this is one of the prayers. It's an extra prayer. And it's a excellent prayer. Excellent prayer. We have a chance for, to gain Allah's mercy. So we should make use of that. We must remember that death is only round the corner. Death is not going to come knocking on the door. It's not going to advertise itself. It's not going to tell you, Oh so and so, I'm, I'm going to come. The angel is definitely going to say, I'm going to come and take your life. I'm going to take your soul away on Thursday. Rather, death will come unexpectedly. It will come when you do not expect it. It will come when you don't expect it. So the real question we need to ask ourselves, have we prepared for death? Are we ready for death? When we're going on holiday, we prepare ourselves gracefully, wholeheartedly. We get our tickets ready, our suitcase ready. We get everything ready, our passport ready, fully prepared so that we could go to our holiday. Are we fully prepared? for the hereafter. Have we got our salahs ticked? Have we got our zakats ticked? Have we got our iman ticked? Have we got our extra charities ticked? Have we? We need to get this ticked. How can we, how can we be so silly and not prepare for death? How can we not prepare for a place, an abode, that we're going to spend the rest of eternity in. If we balance this dunya with hereafter, we cannot measure it. How can we give so much emphasis to this dunya, get lost in this dunya, get lost in this materialistic world, get lost, get indulged in this dunya and its beauties when it's only temporarily. It's only a short abode. There are narrations that this dunya, the time that we're spending this dunya, is it's the same as a horse rider who unmounts from his horse just to take a little rest under a tree. This is what this dunya is. It's just a, it's just like a little moment. It's only brief. Then the horse rider continues on. So it's nothing. It's insignificant. This dunya. We should not indulge too much into this dunya. Of course we have to live in this dunya. We have to work. We have to provide. But we have to remember why we're here in this dunya. This dunya is just a test for us. It's just a test for us for the hereafter. This dunya is just a test for us for the hereafter. So we have to live in this dunya remembering that it's just a test. This house, car, Gold, silver, diamond, whatever we possess, it will just go away. We're not going to take our car with us to the hereafter. We're not going to take our gold, our money, our house, our flat with us to the hereafter. No, rather they will just decay away. Your car will rust away. Your money will just go to someone else's hand. 
your gold will melt away. It will, it will just go. So why are we so, so eager? And why do we cling on? Why do we compromise for all these worldly possessions and compromise the hereafter? Why? Why don't we just remember every time that this, this dunya is just temporary? Everything that we own is just materialistic. It's nothing but material. We don't really own it. The land that you own, the land that you own, the land that we've paid so much money to own, the house that we own, it's just going to belong to someone else after we die. We're not going to take this land with us. Alhamdulillah, if you got money and you could afford it, yes, buy a lot of land. There are people, however, who cannot afford land and they spend the whole, whole savings. They spend, they spend the working life, saving up, being stingy, saving up, saving up for land and compromising, compromising the duties to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the duty towards the family. They're working so hard, two jobs, three jobs, four jobs, just to get that money for that land, that they don't have enough time to pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They don't have enough time to spend with the family, with the wife, with the children. They don't have that time. For what? A piece of land that just has your name on it. That someone else, that someone else, will register in the future. This land you're not going to take with you. We have to remember, speaking of land, the smallest Jannah, everyone has their own Jannah. The smallest Jannah, the lowest Jannah, okay, for a person, the size of it is going to be 10 times the size of Earth. 10 times the size of Earth is going to be the smallest Jannah. So how much land are you going to own? Can you imagine that? It's all to you. This is your land. And that will be with you for eternity. So we must remember that death can come anytime. And we must prepare for death and the hereafter. I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us of the people that constantly remember about death. And the people that are prepared for the meeting with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Anything good I said is from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. All my mistakes are from me, myself, and from the shaitan. I hope this story is helpful to us all.